welcome home. We're glad that you're here with us. Hey, hopefully you got a worship folder on the way in. If not, we've got lots of them over there, so uh, make sure you grab one. There's a ton of stuff in here uh, to kind of look through. So if you're new with us, just a couple of things. One, there is a, uh, there's a card on your tables. It's just an information card. If you don't mind filling that out for us, um, you can take it where the lights are hanging down over there at the welcome table. And uh, at the end of the service, we've got a gift we'd love to give you. So keep that in mind. And then let me explain this real quick. So the outside of that worship folder is your uh, listening guide. So you can use that as Tony as I uh, walk through uh, the lesson today, which I'm looking forward to, to sorting through with you here. Um, and then inside, there's a few different things. There should be a uh, flyer for the item drive for the Quad City Outreach Center. So take a look at that and some of the stuff that they're looking for. And you can drop those things off here and just note the dates on there as well. And then you also have another folder that's in there because there's a lot of stuff coming up and going on. So you're going to have to take some time to kind of read through that and just familiarize yourself. Um, a couple of things that I'll mention real fast. Trunk or Treat is today. So Trunk or Treat's this evening. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It always is. And uh, so if you, can, if you still want to help out with that, you can. Uh, you're more than welcome to, uh, to come, bring your car, um, decorate your trunk, uh, nothing too scary. And we've got kids both from here as well as the area who will come in for that. Uh, so that's coming up today. And then uh, we'll talk through a few more things here uh, as we get towards the end of the service. Um, so tell you what, let's pray real quick and then we're going to get into worship. We're going to get going here. Father, we love you and we thank you for today. And again, we thank you for harvest, and we thank you for, uh, for taking care of us in all the ways that you do. And we thank you for opportunities to, uh, to help people and opportunities to uh, help kids have fun. We thank you for opportunities just to be your hands and your feet, um, to be able to speak your words into people's lives. And Father, we, we thank you for this time that we get together, and we just simply pray that everything else that's going on... Um, Lord, just shift that stuff to the side for the next hour so we can truly focus in on you and who you've called us to be. We love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's stand. Let's worship. One, two, three. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want 
Welcome to that season in the upper Midwest that we call third fake summer. I actually had 
planned on having, because I was just looking at the weather in the past, and I actually thought that for truck or treat today, I would bring and set up, I've got three fire pits. Oh yeah, that'd and be And I thought I'd come set up three fire pits. And now, if you're cold, I'm just gonna tell you to go see the doctor. So where did that Scott County wildfire start? Oh yeah, it was in Adventures parking lot. Well, I was gonna use fire pits. <laughs> It is for the church, so it counts, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, hey, we're uh, we're glad you guys are here, and uh, we're we're kind of moving into our second week here in this series as we've uh, we've been looking at something I find kind of interesting. You know, I uh, I have noticed through the years of of doing ministry with people, um, there are some people growing up. They got this picture of God being loving. And that that and, and so there's a like a friendship. There is this understanding of God, like they, they want to draw close to Him. And then on the other hand, I have met a lot of people for lots of different reasons um, who, uh, frankly, really struggle with a relationship with God because uh, their understanding of God's really predicated on not just like healthy godly fear, but like fear of like abusive, overbearing yeah, parents sure. who is waiting to you know to punish them over every single thing that, you know, they could possibly do wrong. Right. And, uh, you know, th that's a lot of where I go back to, and we call them kind of the thou shalt nots. There's a lot of people right. who are just, they believe that God is most interested in the thou shalt nots of their life, which for those of you who didn't grow up, uh, the King James, Ten Commandments was the thou shalt nots. Great movie. Right. right. Yeah, great movie. Um, and so, <sighs> it's problematic. You know, that kind of fear really, um, it undermines a relationship with God in so many it, different ways. Well, and it's a bad translation. Yeah, uh, it's it is. It's just a bad translation to English. And so, you know, so what do we want to do in the midst of this series as we kind of talk through some things? So um, there are the thou shalt nots. I mean, the Ten Commandments do spend more time talking about things that God says, these are out of bounds. Um, than it does, you know, necessarily with kind of encouragement. It it really is. Hey, these are these are the um, these are the guardrails, um, and, and there are those lists throughout Scripture, and we we've kind of talked about a couple of those. We started last week in this. You know, the the biggest one that that we were looking at is Proverbs six, which has seven things that God says. These are just again, these are out of bounds. These are characteristics. These are things in your life that shouldn't be there because they're not who I am. And, um, and those are important because we do need checklists. I mean, we do need checks on our life. We do. I, uh, I know I go through my life and there are days where I feel something and uh, I want to say something. Somebody cuts me off in traffic and I want to do something. And, uh, and, and you need those things to stop and go, okay, why am I feeling this way? And why do I want to say that? And, you know, and, and should I do this or not? And frankly... When, when you're feeling those things, you don't need like a big, deep, you know, discernment lesson. What you need is a real clear cut no, right? Yeah, I mean, you just right. need that. So those things are For really, sure. really important. And we talked last week about haughty eyes, uh, which, the, you know, that haughty eye thing is really just about looking down on other people. Yep. You know, looking that's probably the, the easiest way that, that you can kind of think about that. It's about pride. Uh, and, and then that gets into jealousy and envy and some other stuff. Um, this week we're going to talk about a lying tongue. We're just going to talk about deception a little bit and why that is, that's so destructive to ourselves as well as to the community that God builds around us. Um, but in the midst of talking about those, those lists of kind of our guardrails, um, we don't want to spend our whole time on that. Right. Because the reality is, um, if you spend all your time just on the things God doesn't want you to do, you're going to just focus on the stuff that God doesn't want you to do. And I, I am not at all convinced that that's what God wants us to spend most of our time thinking about. Uh, God wants us to spend more of our time becoming like him. Right. You know, scripture's really clear. We talked about it last week. I mean, the, the one thing God wants us to do is become like Christ. Yeah, if I, I find if I focus on becoming who God made me to become... I don't have to worry on doing the kind of things that God said he doesn't want me to become. Yeah, I, I, if, you focus, if you focus on where you're going, you don't end up in the rumble strips near as right. much, right? And that right. was kind of that analogy we talked a little bit about last week. And right. so, yeah, that, that's kind of where we are in the midst of this. I mean, just remember this. God's biggest desire for your life is not that you don't just do bad things. God's desire for your life is that you will be righteous and holy. 
the way that he made you to be righteous and holy, the way he's righteous and holy. Right. Like that's God's biggest desire for us. So, you know, that, that's kind of what we're spending our, our, our time on. And again, um, we need to talk about the, the checks, um, but we want to really focus on who we're becoming, right? Right. right. But the checks are important. Um, and they speak into some things. And this week we're kind of talking about dishonesty and, you know, dishonesty just of all types is really, really destructive. Super. Yeah, the reality is if you want to trace back every problem in the world today goes back to dishonesty. Yeah. Every problem in the world today goes back to dishonesty. It goes back to the Garden of Eden when the serpent comes to Adam and Eve and says, here it is. That's the origin of all the problems, of all the troubles that we have today. And so that power of that is so destructive. And so it shows up today in like, uh, uh, well. All kinds of different ways. I mean. I mean, straight up lying. Yeah. Which is the direct approach. Uh, A lot of it is manipulation. You know, oh, we were yeah, actually yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. So, yeah, it, not, and not to get into anything specific, but there is so much manipulation that is going on in political ads right now. It is it, like it makes me want to vomit. I am so tired of it on both sides. I'm just done. If I see one oh more, my gosh. I am at a point right now where I almost don't care if it's Bohannon or Meeks. I just want the ads to stop. Yeah. Right. Please just stop the ads. It's, it's horrific. Um, and, and it's happening. There's a big story out this week on one of the candidates and just uh, some serious manipulation that had been done with a, an answer that they had given. Yeah. Yeah, and, and not just like news media, but also like talking heads and, you know, popular entertainment people and just they shortened the clip. And uh, it's, it's just amazing how when you, oh, we left out, it's, it's not that they said anything wrong, which right. this goes back to, to Satan. Satan quoted God. Right. Oh, God told you that you shouldn't eat from that, that he would die? Oh, you sure? Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it was casting doubt. That's it, problematic. That was, it was manipulative. So it wasn't straight up lying. It was, it was a manipulation of the truth. Right. Well, and that's, that, so that's. That, so there's that all kinds of ways that happens. takes us back to, we kind of start, our root on this is in the Ten Commandments. And you go back to t Ten Commandments, mm. chapter 20. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, which is sharing something that isn't true about them. In fact, that whole concept, the whole problem with lying, this is so important that in, what is it, four verses, in Proverbs 6, in four verses, it's repeated. It's the only one of the things God hates that's repeated. Well, I, I think it's really important as we, before we go too much farther in that too, just to, to go back and it's easy to look at everybody else's stuff and look outward and go, look how bad look lying how bad is and manipulation. But there's a, there's an aspect of this that anytime I build myself up bigger than I am yeah, right. to other people, yeah, every time Greg lies about the size of fish that he caught. Right. That's what we tell know, him. That's deception. We tell him no that pictures, no this. fish. No pictures, no fish. It's Would happened too many times, Greg. I got to call you out in front of everybody. It's biblical. Um, so, it, but I mean, it's any of that stuff. It's when we put other people down to raise ourselves right. up. I mean, any level, we, we do this stuff all the time. So do Christians do it? Well, I've done it. What? I'm a pastor. So, I'm, I mean, I'm shocked, whatever, shocked to hear whatever that Christians would be dishonest. Right can't believe that's happening in here. So let's look at a problem that, that, that everybody, including Mark's believers, has. We deal with this, and the, we'll, we'll kind of use this as our focus today. Uh, and it's just so pragmatic. It's the concept of gossip. Hmm. We gossip all the time, and most gossip is about lying. Um, I love this from Proverbs 18, because this describes it so well. The words of gossip are like, Salted caramel chocolates. I don't think that's exactly. They what go it's down like. to the innermost points, but it's true though, right? When we we hear gossip, it gets our attention. Theodore Roosevelt, uh, President Roosevelt, had a daughter named Alice, and she was kind of a socialite in the D.C. area. She was really popular, and she's really quippy. And she used to use this line. This was published in several of the newspapers. She would say to people, "If you can't say something good about someone," sit down here right by me. <laughs> and that's how we are. We don't even care if something's true as long as it's negative and it's about someone we don't like. Sure. Someone we're mad at. That's yeah. dangerous. 
that's dangerous. Well, it's, it's dangerous, and, and I mean, and it extends out from there, and again, we're all guilty of this. And I, I'll tell you, the place where I see this the most at this point um, is, is on social media, and especially oh, with big memes. Time. Big time, big uh, time. There are so many different things that spread, and guys, we gotta be careful with this stuff. Uh, I see this so much from Christians. I see so much stuff that gets right. spread that is, you know, this, I, it's gossip. Well, I was thinking about, is. I, the, the first one I really remember happening that I could put my finger on and say, okay, this isn't true. There used to be, and it spread through the churches, it was a story about Procter & Gamble being a satanic organization. Yeah, I remember some that. Of y'all, some of y'all remember that? Well, because it had an oak tree and a moon or some other weirdo thing in it. And everybody's like, that's a satanic symbol. Um, and it wasn't. But that, that whole lie was... But it went big. It went big through the churches. People started boycotting. Dude, I, I got Fox faxes. And Gamble. I oh, got my faxes on fax, my fax machine. It was in, in church newsletters. In church. Over this. Oh, yes. oh my goodness. It was just insane. Well, and frankly, it hasn't totally died out because every once in a while we'll see something like that pop up. We've done yes. the same thing with Starbucks. Oh, frankly, yeah. and believe me, I don't like coffee and I don't like Starbucks. But like there have been several moments where oh they they took uh oh, the the cups. One of the them was Starbucks the cups, cups, the Starbucks cups, one of them was about uh, several of them they're generally around Christmas because everybody gets all emotional about Christmas. Um, and, and it's easy to manipulate people when they're emotional. Frankly, that's really what's going on. And we know some of those. One in particular, we know exactly who started it and how it started. And it's just complete lies. It was all lies. It was just manipulation. Again, believe me, I'm not an apologist for Starbucks. So we, 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 uh, we talked about social media being a big deal. So the big one lately you've seen is like this sunset picture of a white cross, and it says, I uh, almost said Starbucks, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is blocking pictures of the cross. Let's light them up with this. Which if you want to like argue that Facebook's evil, we can have that conversation. That's a legit conversation. Like, we, can, we can have that conversation. But we don't need to make stuff up. Right. And Facebook has never blocked a picture of the cross. You see people posting, we saw Zuckerberg, Zuck, whatever his name is. We saw Zuck say. See, he's getting emotional. And, and the problem is that by itself is already a lie because you didn't see him say it. And it says that uh, on, posting the Lord's Prayer is against Facebook policy. It's never, post the Lord's Prayer all you want, but quit lying about it. Let, let me make it real simple because some people are okay, going to miss okay, what you yes, just said. Go ahead. If, if it got posted, they didn't take it down. Yeah, how would you even know, right? Like, if you saw the post, yeah. it means that the thing isn't <laughs> true. How would you know that? Like, let's just keep it on a real simple, like, we're all clear? Okay. Yeah, I just mean, like. make sure before we move on. If you're posting that stuff, just do us a favor and wake up your other brain cell, all right? <laughs> and think this stuff through. It's probably from the Starbucks coffee. It's got to be too off. much coffee, too much coffee. Okay, so. Why is this such a big deal for God that he keeps giving us this warning over and over? And he's warning his people. He's not warning not his people. These are in, these are in words to his people. Why is this such a big deal for God? Well, I mean, I, you know, again, let me just go back for a minute. Number one, um, this isn't who God is, and I know we'll, we'll get yeah. into that. But, you know, the other side is just if, if you need an answer to that question, go back to the very first thing that got, got everything <laughs> off. Right. Like, it, it's easy to see how destructive it is because we all feel the destructiveness of sin in creation. Like, this is how we got here. Um, you know, the biggest thing is because with this is that it, it just, it is not who God is, and it is, is what, it is evil. So, right. deception is what evil is. Deception is not anything of God. And I mean, from that alone, that is, that's a huge part of this. Yeah, that's massive. And Jesus throws down on that and makes it where every decision we, every decision we make comes down to two things. Are we going to represent truth or are we going to represent deception? Mm. Every decision Because we're representing we, him or we're, we're representing, representing him. something else. Yeah. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, you can't come to God unless you're going to come with these things. You gotta, these are going to be your character. But then he also... Just a little bit before that said, 
you people don't know God because your father is Satan. And you do the things Satan wants you to do. And Satan's a liar and you lie. Which was harsh. Which was harsh. There's was not totally, a lot of wiggle totally room harsh. in this. Yeah, no, but he wasn't thinking about their feelings there, right? And he says, you are the children of your father and your father is the father of lies. And so Jesus is basically saying, every time you make a choice about lying, you are declaring your spiritual heritage. Is your spiritual heritage the devil or is your spiritual heritage God? He says you're choosing to either represent righteousness or to represent unrighteousness. So, so as believers, how do we distinguish those two things? I mean, again, not a lot of wiggle room. There's no safe space in this. No. You know, you're, you're either working towards the things of God and you're working for him or frankly he says the only other alternative is you're working against him and therefore you're working to further evil. They have completely different motivations. If you you look at the notes there, God creates and blesses, Satan deceives and destroys. I mean that's the bottom line. So this thing that I'm going to share on social media, this thing I'm going to pass on to someone else, am I seeking to bless or am I seeking to destroy? Mm. I mean, that's really what it comes down to because God's nature is truth. Yeah. I mean, the scripture says over and over, he never does wrong. He can always be trusted. He does not lie. So it's clear. There's no, there's no wiggle room. There's no gray space. On well, this. and just, just on a really basic thing then, and, and this makes so much sense with then as Christians, we're sorting through, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Right. How do we, how do we imitate him? Because again, going back to the first week, that, that is the goal. That's what it means to be a Christ follower, is to imitate Christ. That's why they spent so much time saying, build each other up, encourage each other. You know, there's this emphasis in there on, you know, as imitating Christ means it, being a part of what God is doing means you're building up. You're, you're helping them become more like the truth. Right. Whereas the other side is anything, any place where we're tearing people down, just on the simplest level, when we're tearing down, we're acting in the opposite mode of who right. God is. Right. Well, so. we know, we know, so we know that God's nature is truth. We also know Satan's nature is deception. Right. It, you can't trust anything Satan says. And, you know, I mean, it began with the lie in the Garden of the Eden. Uh, but the reality is, while we're in the flesh, we're going to be conflicted like this. We sure. can't not be conflicted. I mean, Paul who writes a third of the New Testament mm-hmm. says and says was it in Romans he says the things I wanted or things I want to do I don't do right. things I don't want to do seem to be the only things I ever do I, I call that the Jekyll and Hyde passage Oh yeah it's you exactly know? what it is and he's talking about I've got this issue going on and then you go over in Galatians 5 and he explains that it's for us too he says these two forces are constantly fighting each other yeah. So you can't just freely go and do your good intentions because you have to stand sure that you're not going to give in to the evil. You've got to measure what you're going to do. And the reality is this honesty, this is foundational for the safety of a family, for the security of a family, for the security of friendships. Well, it goes up from there. It starts with the family and then it goes to the next level of community. And then it goes, you know, again, if you want to build up, you know, we're having lots of conversations about, you know, our communities and our, 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 who we are as a nation, it starts, it starts at a family, you know, it starts individually and it starts as a family and then it keeps building up and, and that integrity that comes from truth supports everything else. I, right. Like that is, it's, it's integral. And it's interesting too in that Galatians passage that Paul's bringing it back to um, really what, what God was talking about a minute ago, which is there are two spiritual forces that are at work in this world. Right. And, and in us, there's mm-hmm. two spiritual forces that are at work. And we're either being led by the Holy Spirit or we're giving in to, you know, this um, manipulation that's been going on since the Garden of Eden that, that evil has right. in our lives. Well, I think one of the things I find encouraging about it is that God acknowledges and lays out for us that there is a battle going on, yeah. that we are at odds within ourselves, even though we're saved. He's not saying we're not saved. He's saying even saved people are going to struggle with this yeah. because while we're here in this life, we still gonna, are going to have that old nature around us. Yeah, again, that we, evil is We need to make a choice us. every yeah. time. I like Ephesians 4. He says, and this is to believers. So this is, 
This is God speaking directly to believers. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature. So he's saying you're going to have to make a choice. And your former way of life. Don't continue on like you've never been saved. You're saved, now let's, let's, let's chase sal- salvation. Which is corrupted, he's talking about then your old way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Therefore, here's where he throws down on us, yeah. stop telling lies. Yeah, it's interesting he goes through that whole thing. And again, it, it, it mirrors that, that conversation we had last week where he talks about, okay, all that stuff's been crucified with Christ. Leave that on the cross. Leave that old nature there and then move forward into who God's created you to be. Yeah, sure. And the one place that he starts with that is where? Is with, it, here it's, it's with telling the truth. Start by telling the truth all the time. So this is fundamental, and it, that's, that's I think the point in the midst of this. Everybody struggles with this. Yes. We're all guilty of it. Frankly, all of us probably fail at this every single day. Every day. In some way, shape, or form, we've all got room to work on this. All right. So if we're not supposed to reflect Satan, because that means we're choosing our, our, our uh, sinful heritage, how do we reflect God? How do we make it clear that we want to choose the righteousness of God, that we want to choose to honor him with our actions? Yeah, I, you got to have something to measure, right. right? I mean, at the end of the day, discernment is really about looking and going, okay, what is of God? What is um, of man? Like, what's just me wanting this thing? And what is, what's evil, you right. know, that's, that's working? And, and that's what discernment is. Um, you need to have things. This is why we go back to, we need some checklists. The checklists are important because they give us a way to, to stop and reassess ourselves and kind of measure. Um, and... Jesus wants us to be discerning and he wants us to really spend time doing this. I mean, Matthew 10, he sends his followers out. He gives them a pretty, pretty stark charge. Well, yeah, okay, so this always has bothered me until maybe 10 years ago. You have these situations where Jesus is telling stories and in the story he praises bad people. Mm. He praises thieves and those kind of guys. And this is one of those verses, Matthew 10. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, so be as cunning as snakes. In Jewish culture, snakes are bad guys. Right. Be as cunning that, that as... That kind of goes back to the Genesis thing, too. It goes way yeah. back to the Genesis thing. So be as cunning as snakes, but as innocent as doves. And I've always struggled with that, going, what in the world? And then, well, let's go back to Genesis 3. The, the serpent was the shrewdest and most cunning. This is the guy that's caused all of our trouble. Mm-hmm. He was the, the shrewdest and the most cunning of all the wild animals the Lord God has made. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago when I finally, I don't know if I finally did the math on this or what, but what he's talking about is he's saying that, listen, you need to reason beyond the culture around you. You need to think beyond what's happening around you. And he's saying for believers, we need to be thinking at a level higher than the unbelievers that are all around us, higher than the culture all around us. And what he's trying to tell us, and we need to measure our words because words matter. Yeah. You, uh, you wrote a thing for your daughter years ago. Do you remember? This is not it. We haven't had this conversation in the midst of this. It just kind of hit me. Do you, do you remember that, um, that, that thing that you wrote for your daughter about being aware? Oh, yes, I do. What's the word for that? Situational, situational awareness. awareness, right? That that's part of what this is, right? You know, this discernment we're talking about. So you know, I, I watched somebody do this the other day. Look, and I, some of you are going to get offended by what I'm getting ready to say. Just deal with it. Um, if you uh, if you walk around all the time with headphones on, you don't know what's going on around you. You're going to be in trouble. If you're looking down at your phone with headphones on as you walk down the street, you have no idea what's coming. Could be a car could be a dog, could be a rabid squirrel. I mean, you just don't know. And you can't be ready for that. Um, I remember a guy who uh, gave a talk about the Goofy Gazelle. It was one of the best sermons I'd ever heard in my life. The guy was a phenomenal storyteller, but was talking about Satan prowls around like a roaring lion. And he was talking about, uh, you know, all the nature shows where you've got like the herd and the lion runs in. They always pick off that one 
you know, who's got his head down and not paying attention. And that, that's, that's a lot of what this is, right. is being aware. And it's, it's not just being aware of what's going on. It's also being aware of, again, how am I being manipulated? And what, what lies am I buying into? What lies and manipulation am I spreading out, you know, again, through what I post or what I say or what I'm getting upset about or, you know, all of those things. And so really this is about that, right? It's, it's being situationally aware of right. ourselves right. and what's going on around us and then be as innocent as doves. Right. But you got to know because otherwise you can't control what you don't know. Right. Well, and he's, he's warning you, you've got to pay attention be aware of what's coming out of your mouth. Be aware of the motivation of what's coming out of your mouth. You know, you got to be checking all that because he says there's going to come a day where every person is going to stand before God and they're going to give an account for every word they have ever spoken. I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. But he says, for by your words you will be what? Condemned or by your words you're going to be acquitted. Because words... Words have power, right? Uh, we, we don't, I, I don't think very often we, we really fully give credit to how much power words have. But you know what's weird, though, is I think, I think we may not give credit to it, but I think we know. No, Pro we do. Pro we Proverbs do. says the tongue has the power of life and death. Mm. How's that? Well, if I spread a rumor about this guy, oh, ooh, we actually have a word for this. You want to kill somebody, but you don't want to touch them? We do what's called assassination, character assassination, mm -hmm. right? And hey, so we, we there's all, that idea. That, well, we can kill somebody's reputation. We, we all went dangerous. to high school with somebody who got that reputation, whatever right. that reputation was, right. and it destroyed their high school time. Yeah. Oh, Maybe absolutely. It was you, but I mean, we, we all had those kids in our schools. Absolutely. So words really are powerful. And in fact, if you go back to Genesis, do you remember how God did all the creation? And God, what, said, let there be light. That's the power of the word. And when Jesus comes into the world, John introduces him. In the beginning was the word. The word already existed. The word was with God. And the word was God. He existed in the beginning. The word gave life to everything. So, I mean, recognizing how, how important our words are. And again, we, we all kind of know this and we all know that frankly, we don't pay as much attention to our words as we ought to because I don't know about you, it, it is fairly often when somebody tells me something I said back, you know, I, man, you know what, I didn't really think, I, I didn't mean to say it that way. Yeah, that came out wrong. Yeah, it came out wrong. Um, well, that's because I, I wasn't paying enough attention to what I said. Right. Um, so how do we test that? I mean, how do we test what's coming off our tongue? Well, you go back to you've got to measure your words. I mean, think about this. Socrates was not a believer, but Socrates came up with a three-filter test. Which, by the way, was before... Which before, was before Scripture. Yeah. Before Scripture. Well, that's not before well, Scripture. Well, okay, be, before, before Jesus sorry, showed up. Before the New Testament. <laughs> right. Before Jesus. Okay. Paul would have known it. His, yeah, his, his, his three-filter three test, he called it, was, is it true... By the way, you've got to tick off all three of these. You've got to check all three before you share. Is it true... Is it good? Is it useful? It may be true, but is it good? Don't share it if it's not, right? No. It may be true. It may be good, but is it actually useful to the people around you? No. Yeah, if not, hold off. Hold it doesn't off. need to be shared. You don't have to share. So Paul comes along then in Philippians, the, the book of joy, the encouraging book. Paul comes along, and Paul would have known... He would have known Socrates' three-filter test, and he took it and he applied it at a godliness, at a righteousness level. Watch what he says, Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Last thing I'm going to say about this, because apparently he's dealing with that a lot. Fix your thoughts on what? What is true? <laughs> what is true? Some of the old translations actually say good instead of honorable because he was he basically quoting to get started, Socrates, on what is true and honorable and right, and then he takes it further, and pure and lovely and admirable. And then if you're still not getting it, he breaks out the fat crayons and draws a picture. 
Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So he says, quit thinking about the negative stuff, and then this other stuff will be okay. Yeah. You know, and, and let me take it back for just a minute to those three things, just real quick. Um, useful is so important in this conversation. Oh, big time. So one of the things that we know, anxiety, depression have skyrocketed, and not just in the United States, across the world. There's a really interesting theory um, about some of that, and and there are some who look at what we're being fed. So there was a time period where basically you didn't know much more than what was going on just in your sphere, right? Yep. So you knew what was going your, on in your, your household. Your you might know what's going on in your neighborhood. You might know what's going on kind of within your town. And what we now have, the majority of what we're being fed in terms of information, for be, just information, is about things, frankly, that are going on around us in the world that are so big that we don't have an individual capacity to do anything about right. them. And so there's a, there's a lot of research that seems to suggest that part of the anxiety that is gripping people right. and part of you know this thing where people get just so focused in on, you need to know the truth about this, you need to know the truth about this, um, and yet it's not useful, and so all it's doing is it's driving people crazy. I saw, I saw a study yesterday uh, done by an ad agency. A negative headline, for every 100 negative headlines that are out there, they're going to get two clicks mm. on yeah. the negative headline. When they click that, the person making the headline gets paid. Mm -hmm. All right? For each additional negative word that shows up in the negative headline, they get two more clicks. So you're looking at basically going from, hey, we're going to make this much money to now with we put three words in so now we're going to make six times this money so where do you think the media what do you think the media is going to do with its headlines they want you to click because that's how they make their money they're not altruistic they're not objective they're out to make money they are 100 percent a business and they're i don't care if it's msnbc i don't care if it's fox news i don't care who it is they are a business, and so their headlines are to get you to go click, click. That's how they get paid. I, I had somebody. You gotta uh, avoid that. I had somebody a while back who uh, was telling me some stuff, and they were, and, and they may be right. I have no idea. They were talking to me about some things that they were really convinced were true, and uh, and and they were very emotionally invested in it. And I remember having that conversation, and they're like, you know, you need to you need to spend a lot of time on this. And I said, you know, I. There's 600 and some people who show up here every weekend. I don't know. We got eight, 900 who show up at any given month. You know how many texts I get? You know how many people call and want to have coffee and talk through stuff, and they're going through deaths, and they're going through cancer, and they're going through all the things that they're going through. And I just looked at them and said, you know, what you're saying may or may not be true. I don't know. I don't have enough information to be able to make that call. I know this. Um, I can either spend all my time getting so focused in on that, which frankly, I can't do anything about that. It right. may be true. Right. And if it is, that's heinous. Like, that's not good. But I, I got a choice in, do I spend my time in discipleship and encouraging people and investing in people's lives and, and you know, meeting people and like being physically present with people? Or do I spend my time listening to podcasts and sorting, sorting through all of this stuff that is information, and it may or may not may, be true. May it may, or may be not true. Be accurate, may be biased. I, I, I got a choice in how I spend my my life, and I can either get invested into trying to figure out all the details of this thing, or I can invest in people. And frankly, I don't have time right. to go through. I, I'm choosing. I, I think God has called me to do this to invest in people. Not to sit and try to be the arbiter and figure out all the, right. all the things in the world that are wrong and all the, whether what's true and what's false. It doesn't mean that that's not important, but frankly, it's so easy to get consumed by those things, right. and you miss all the opportunities that God's putting around you. Right. Just be careful with that. Again, well, true, it may or may not be true. Is it good? And then even more so, is it useful? Can you actually do anything about it? If not, don't spend a huge amount of time on it. Right, absolutely. So if we're going to represent God, if we're going to represent Christ, 
we're going to live in truth, as Jesus said, he's the way and the truth and the life. So living in truth means aligning my thoughts, my words, and my actions with the reality of God's character, not in reality with the culture around me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live above the culture. Yeah, you know, again, let's go back to this premise. Why are we having this conversation? Um, we need those checklists. You know, we need them because we're called to something more. We're called to, we're called to imitate Christ. Now, here's the deal. Make sure those checklists are in place, but here's my encouragement to you. Spend your days going through, spend 80% of your time and your focus and your efforts and all your stuff becoming like Christ. And that means being his hands and his feet and speaking words of encouragement and truth into people's lives and building them up. You know what? If, if you spend more time focused on sharing and shining and reflecting God's light into the people's lives around you, you're going to be less tempted to say the untruths. Yeah. Like the lying stuff, some of that will take care of itself. So focus yeah. on the truth. And that's the key. Yeah. Let's pray real quick. Father, we love you and uh, we thank you for loving us and loving us enough to, to confront us in um, where we mess up and where we've gotten off. And, um, and also, even more so, thank you for spending the majority of the time in Scripture really teaching us who to be. You spend far more time in who you've called us to be than just in telling us what not to do. And Lord, I, I know I can get consumed into this, this relationship with you that seems to be focused in just not being bad, but you want so much more for us. Lord, I, I just pray that for each one of us, um, Lord, help us, to, help us to be discerning. Help us to be consumed by your truth. Help us to be focused on it, uh, and who you've called us to become, what it looks like to be Jesus. And Lord, in every opportunity that you put around us, I, I pray that we will, um, we will reflect your light into this world. This world's dark. There's a lot of untruth. There's a lot of deception that's out there. Um, we can't fight that battle. You can fight it. And what you've called us to do in the midst of that is simply shine your light. So Lord, help us to be faithful in doing that every day, where there's falsehoods in us, where we boast, where, where there are things that, uh, that tear people down. Lord, help us, to, help us to quit doing that and help us to focus in on building people up. We love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. That's one of the greatest truths in Scripture. It says that uh, even when we were enemies of God, this is the definition for love, that God loved us so much, even when we were working against him, he sent Jesus to make a way not so we would just stop working against him, but so we would be with him. We'd be aligned with him. We'd be like him. Man, that, that is an amazing thing. As we take a few minutes here to take communion, um, maybe that's something to sit and sort through. You don't have to be a member here if you've taken any classes here. If you love Jesus, you call him Lord, and we invite you to take communion with us. We're going to have music playing here for just a, a minute or two, and then I'll come back up and, and close us out.
When you're scared to invite someone to church, or not. you procrastinate. You can do it either way. <laughs> uh, hey, we're glad that you're here. Um, so a couple things before we take off. Uh, one of the things that Marge kind of helps head up, uh, Marge works with a uh, number of foster kids. And uh, what's the name of the organization? I forget. Families first, right? So one of the things that uh, a lot of foster kids end up hopping families, frankly, it's just part of the... It's part of what ends up happening, and uh, they don't have anything but like a garbage bag of stuff to take with them. I mean, they're just, maybe it's a suitcase at best. But one of the things that uh, Families First does is they, they provide blankets. That, it's almost like home away from home, so it's the one thing they can have that, you know, they can kind of take from place to place that is just theirs, and there's a lot of comfort in that. Um, so, We've got those back there. We've got some more tie blankets back there. I know we took a bunch last week. Um, if you want to help out with that in any way, shape, or form, whether it's helping get more fabric or whatever, see Marge, uh, and she can kind of help you sort through that stuff. Um, we've got a couple other things going on. Again, trunk or treat is today. Uh, one thing I just asked for, I'm going to be gone, and if you're in my Wednesday night class, I'm trying to catch everybody, but I, I'm going to have to cancel my class. So I told you guys to pray for my sister-in-law's family last week. She passed away, and they asked me if I'd come down and do the funeral, so i got to drive to Kentucky tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to help them with that funeral. So if you don't mind, just pray for me as I, I head that direction. Um, there's stuff about Christmas that's in here. There's a number of different things that are in here. Um, so please read through all that stuff. The other thing that we're getting ready to do is we're going to have a baptism. And so uh, are we ready for that? Are you guys ready? Okay, so if you'd like, make sure you go pick up your kids, because otherwise I get in trouble. So if you don't get your kids from Adventureland, they yell at me. So go get your kids. If you'd like to come back, I know we're going to have a, a baptism here in just a couple of minutes, and you can come back and, and be here as a part of that. So, hey, love you guys. Have a great week. We will see you later. Please clean up after yourselves. All right.